Welcome everyone to On Podcast, the On Microsoft Podcast, where we talk about Microsoft stuff on a podcast. I'm your host today, Kareem Anderson. I'm joined by the world's greatest co-host, Riff Backus. Yeah, and we are in the, what do they call them, the dog days of summer, something like that, where it's light on the news and heavy on the hot weather. So uh, with that being said, we do still have some news to bring you. Uh, we got some stuff to talk about, and what should we be talking about this week? There's no news, so we're making up our own news, which is Panos <laughs> Panay basically teasing a new surface is what we think he's doing, but we'll have more on that to kick off the show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll also be talking about Windows 10 22H2 getting a potential set of new features in a very limited scope. And we'll get into what scope means uh, by definition. And we'll also have some news about a Xbox Game Pass where you're coming to Windows 11. Yeah, so where this is the first side of customize, or well, we wouldn't say customize widgets, but at least additional widgets that people actually want to use. Uh, and then we'll be doing a fast recap about uh, Xbox insiders in Colombia and Ireland are getting a taste of what could potentially end up being a uh, Game Pass for your family. Yep, and we also have some news about Windows 11 smart app control getting a little bit smarter. Yeah, and then we'll be talking about ClipChamp cleaning up its paid plans because, well, quite frankly, they were confusing. And as a bundled piece of software in Windows, they followed suit. So maybe Microsoft is saying, hey, you know what, we need to start with ClipChamp and then we'll start organizing everything else in our broad array of uh, solutions. And then we can't forget the Windows subsystem for Android getting a August update with a bunch of new features. Even though everyone else I feel like has, but we'll bring it back up. Uh, and then an odd bug. Uh, it looks like Uber's decided to crash Win uh, Word and Outlook for some reason if you're <laughs> uh, viewing Uber receipts. So we'll figure out what's going on with that. And then we have the week ahead segment where uh, I didn't get to finish my Pixel Bud Pro review just yet because I am lazy like that, but it's coming next week, I promise. Yeah, and it looks like we have some back to school monitor reviews that should be coming up since you are the king of monitors. I'm assuming you're going to get into that. Uh, I have, once again, a ton of Lenovo stuff. Uh, I got some, I got a Dino book, which is Toshiba, uh, formerly Toshiba. I'm reviewing that as well. A uh, ton of laptops coming in uh, as we get ready for back to school. Hopefully, I'll have these views up before you start making your purchase decisions, and maybe I can help you a little bit. Uh, I also got my hands on our Windows and Arm ThinkBook. I know you got it a few weeks ago, so now we're going to kind of hopefully compare some notes and see, uh, you know, how our use cases differ and whether or not the device is uh, varied for both use cases. All right, now let's get into the fake news of the day, which is. <laughs> Panos Pane apparently teasing a new Surface. Now, it's something that we spotted. Uh, I messaged you when I first saw it. I'm like, do you see this? What I see too? <laughs> and it's basically in on over on his Instagram page, Panos Pane, he shared a photo and the caption was, uh, what a Monday. And uh, in that caption, he also mentioned quick photo shoot in the, live, in the lobby with a photo bomb from our chief scientist, Stephen Batchy. So in in those photos itself, there are three photos. And in two out of the three photos, you could see that there's a blurred object sitting on the table. And if you zoom in, uh, we'll have the B-roll on the screen so you could be a ju judge for yourself. But if you zoom in on the blur, you could see that it looks kind of like the shape of like what a mini surface studio kind of would look like. I know you and I were having a discussion about it, but in two out of three of the photos that he posted, the, the that object is specifically blurred on the table. And then in the if you look at the photos regularly without zooming in weirdly like we did, you could see that the camera angle is hiding whatever he's holding in his hands. Uh, in in the first photo, you could see that the, the lighting is hiding what's in his hands. And then in the third photo, you could see that it's it's taken from behind his back. So you're not seeing what he's holding in his hand either. And the fact that Stephen Batchy is there, who has been known for making stuff, uh, who's known for like revolutionizing Microsoft's hardware. He invented the sur first Surface, the Surface table. So where I, I just put all of that together and I'm assuming that this is a panel spin tease and we could have some hardware coming soon. Yeah, I get this message from you at, I don't know, 7.30, 8 o'clock <laughs> at night saying, hey, go to this Instagram. Do you see what I see? 
And I did at first, and I don't know, maybe the image refreshed, but probably within a minute or so, I got a new image yep. of, of the blurred out thing. And again, it's a quick Photoshop, poorly Photoshop. I, I probably could have done a better job in MS Paint, by the way, panels, if you're listening, Microsoft Paint can help you out uh, to kind of blur out that image. So uh, as far as us saying that he's teasing it, it we are being tongue in cheek. He may have inadvertently uh, uploaded some pictures with some hardware that we may be seeing hopefully during surface time, which is in October, uh, which could represent, uh, as you said, it was a mini display of what could be a surface um, studio, uh, which that being said, it could also just be an updated version or a bigger version of the surface pro. If they're going to start doing stuff like that as well, if they're going to get into, you know, uh, 14 inches or whatnot. And so if they found a way to maybe make the surface, Pro X bigger since uh, since it won't be using fans and things of that nature. Maybe they've decided to elongate the, the viewing of it because it won't weigh as much as an Intel version. Maybe that's how we start to distinguish between uh, Intel and ARM versions. ARM being the much thinner, more versatile uh, handheld versions versus the Intel, which will be more like your Pro Age, which are thicker, stockier, uh, made for production. Maybe he's teasing, maybe that's the lineup going forward. Uh, as far as what's in his hand, uh, I don't know. Uh, I would, you know, I think it's too early to say, uh, you know, they're going to start hinting at about a surface duo of any sort. So I have no idea what could be in his hand for that. Uh, again, this is just a speculating because of a poorly photoshopped thing on the table, which again, you'll see in the images, you can be judged for yourself. They are trying to obscure whatever's on that table specifically, even though there's a surface studio sitting right behind it. So, uh, you know, they, they could have blurred out the entire everything on the table, but whatever's being blurred out is being blurred out. And we're hoping it's new hardware, because, again, if we've seen a Surface Pro 8 before or we've seen a studio laptop before, there's no reason to go the extra mile to blur it out and then re-upload the same image or whatnot. So with that being said, uh, I'm hoping for new hardware. I think we all are hoping for new hardware. Uh, we can actually talk about that for a quick second of what we are believing will be shown uh, in October, usually, right? Right around that, or end of September, early yep. October. Uh, we do believe that there's going to be a Surface Pro, a Surface Laptop 5. Um, hopefully, they'll be adding ports to that that device. Uh, maybe they'll be adding that new haptic uh, touchpad as well. So for those of you who have managed to keep your Alcantara clean, but have gotten debris into the trackpad because it is a separate piece of hardware, you may, not, you may no longer have to worry about that. For those of you who have never tried a Surface Laptop Studio before and the haptic uh, trackpad it is amazing um, i'm hoping they bring that to the surface pros as well because it's one solid piece again you don't have to worry about uh you know things getting in to the trackpad area or pressing too hard and you know potentially wearing out sections of it and you know having issues down the road it just it's a revolutionary technology that apple has been using for a quick minute uh bring it to the detached keyboards and bring it to all other keyboards we also know that i think uh, we talked about a uh update to surface pro uh, surface pro 9 of some sort uh you and i have discussed uh the potential potentiality of just calling the surface combining the surface pro line for both arm and intel and just having the different variations uh we don't believe there's any surface duo talks no surface laptop we are hoping that they make an update to the surface studio if not then maybe they will have some clarifications that going forward from now on only the Surface Laptop Studio is the thing you need and connected to a bunch of different things. And with that being said, maybe they detach the, the screen finally. Maybe they say, you know what, we give up on trying to keep up with an all-in-one uh, with a base computer that is you know, proficient enough with, within the time we release it. We'll just give you the screen and you can go buy our Surface Laptop and it'll be hopefully you know, up, to the, up to date with the technology or at least maybe a year behind at most. What are you thinking? I'm just rolling back a bit and thinking about what what exactly maybe we could be wrong on everything and it could be that maybe it was because I messaged Mary Jo Fally who we had on the show before and I'm like hey Mary Jo what do you think of this I sent her the link to our story because no one else picked up on it we were the only yeah. ones and she's like uh I think it's just a Mac sitting on the table and Microsoft PR was like Ooh. it won't look good if the Surface guy has a Mac on the table and they probably just edit out the Mac and I, I'm like, oh, that makes sense too. And maybe it's something. Maybe it's Stephen Batchy's. I'm saying his last name wrong, but maybe it's Stephen's computer, and he has some 
like sensitive information on the screen or something and Microsoft wanted to blur it out. So those those are two other possibilities there other than the crazy one of us thinking that it's a new surface. <laughs> you know what, sadly, that's probably, you know, it's the Occam's razor, like it's just the simplest answer. So you're probably right. She's probably right, unfortunately. Uh, but it's it's good to hope, I guess, I suppose. I mean, why have a random photo shoot for Surf? I mean, for Panos if there's no exactly, Surface yeah. associated with it? And then the rumor too. I think it was Tom Warren who said that um, there could be new Surface devices at Inspire, which is coming up in uh, October, mm-hmm. and we're getting there. So it could be uh, preparing for that. Who knows? And it's yeah. not the first time, like Tom Warren pointed out to me when he replied to my tweet. It is not the first time that Panos Penny has blurred an object and it eventually ended up becoming a product when the service duo was first being produced. He literally had it on his desk and he blurred it out. And then we later found out, oh, that was a service duo. Yeah, I mean, he's he, maybe he's just trying to one up uh, Phil Spencer, who is cleverly just hiding stuff in his <laughs> background, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, with that being said, we'll move on uh, to other news that is not hardware related. If you want us to, we'll come back to it at some point later on. But uh, our next topic is Windows 10 22H2 getting a scope set of new features, according to Microsoft. And this is another Microsoft moment because they put out a blog post saying Windows 10 22H2 is now out for testing in the release preview channel. And A couple of hours later, I think it was like at 5 o'clock or 9 o'clock at the night, they updated that blog post to mention that Windows 10 version 22H2 has a scope set of features and Microsoft will share more details on this update later this year. So Windows 10 22H2 might come with new features, but we're not sure what just yet. Yeah, so you and I were just briefly before we started running the cameras trying to figure out what does scope even mean? Like... um, are they going to be bringing specific Windows 10 new features, which could be anywhere from, hey, look, we've bumped up security measures as a new feature to versions of Windows 11, uh, highlights of Windows 11 to Windows 10, you know, maybe some design features that will be commonalities, you know, maybe not the full uh, breadth of what we got for Windows 11 back in November and what people should be getting uh, whenever they release the next version of it. Uh, but, you know, some things that make it more consistent with Windows 11 as far as maybe apps are concerned and uh, folders. I don't know. It just seems weird to start giving Windows 10 scope features, even though the end of life is a year and a half out or so. But they've done it in the past because the new Microsoft Store uh, from Windows 11 is in Windows 10. And the new search box, I think it's called Search Highlights That Everyone Hates. It's in Windows 10 as well as Windows 11. So maybe you're right. Maybe some of the things from Windows 11 could flow their way down into Windows 10 later this year. Yeah, I mean, I'm still waiting on this, you know, unified OneNote app and unified Outlook to to start, you know, being more prominent. Maybe those are things that will find their way down to Windows 10 because they are both for enterprise and for consumers and makes sense to just have them. But again, I don't know if those are Windows-specific features more than just apps. So I, I'm, I'm hoping they clarify. And not just or, it more could ju- or it could just be IT features, like <sighs> the last Windows uh, uh, Windows 10 featured update was, where I think it was updates for Windows Hello and then something about management, uh, Azure Man. I, I, don't, I don't remember what it was, but I do remember that it was just like IT centric features in the last Windows 10 featured update. So maybe they are, maybe they're going to bring more of that, which is why they're calling it scoped rather than major. Who knows at this point? Makes more sense. I mean, it's not like they're going to be bringing their uh, weathers and widgets to Windows 10 yeah, anytime exactly. soon, right? So Speaking then, how which, would they sell Windows 11 PCs if they just copy Windows 11 and bring it bring it over to Windows 10? So fair point. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of uh, weathers and widgets, uh, things like that, that panel, uh, we have a new widget in our panel, right? For those who still frequent that area. Yeah, if you are on the dev channel and you installed build 25174, you're going to have a new Xbox Game Pass uh, widget uh, to choose from in your widgets board. And Microsoft is calling it the window to the extensive PC Game Pass library. They say it will show the latest additions games leaving soon and others from highlight highlighted categories 
and then take you over to the Xbox app where you can install these games, see reviews, or go all in. And it's not finalized right now. They're still working to add some more quote-unquote exciting functionality that they say will be coming soon. And also the ability to sign into your Xbox profile and jump back into recently played games. So Microsoft is working hard on this Xbox Game Pass widget for Windows 11. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm hoping they worked hard because I, I tested that and it is really just a like scroller to the Xbox game app eventually. Like every panel opens up the exact same thing. Uh, <laughs> they even have a, yeah, they even have a sign in section where it's like, oh, you haven't been signed in. And then you click on it and as soon as your Xbox app opens in, in its full view, you've already been signed in and it's kind of a disconnect. So it seems like a placeholder for right now. Uh, just letting people know that. Uh, you'll be able to resize it you know, accordingly, like within the widget window. So it's small, medium, large. Uh, and as you said, there'll be sections where you maybe could scroll to see your achievements for certain games, click on those games and hop right into that action. If it's cloud based or even if it's installed on your device, uh, that'd be amazing. Um, or see some playback video uh, or information about um, groups. I, I think it's like an Xbox where you can like, a favorite a section or a group of uh, games or activities or a club. So if you're someone who is part of, you know, a Far Cry club or a Red Dead or something like that, uh, you can see the activity that's going on in that widget or a quick view of it. Um, so again, like you said, they're they're working hard on it. I'm glad it's showing up. I'm hoping that they uh, again start at least showing the the, the capabilities of first class widgets or first class apps in that widget section and allow people to start making their own versions of that so that we can get some more useful stuff. Maybe they can invite Instagram into there or TikTok or something like that in the widget section, uh, which would be great uh, for a lot of people. They can start removing those icons off their taskbar and just leaving them in the widget, you know, if they want to at that point. So uh, hopefully the widget future is bright and not something like sets, which will be taken back from us in about six months. And that's actually the perfect segue for the fast recap because uh, I'll put 10 minutes on the clock. We have five topics to get to. And the first topic in the fast recap relates to Xbox insiders getting the ability to preview a shared Game Pass Ultimate uh, uh, s subscription. So basically, if you uh, live in Colombia or Ireland, you're going to be able to share your Game Pass Ultimate benefits with up to four people. And that's basically meaning each of those four people will get to play the same games that you have in your library. And each of them will have their own library of games uh, based off of your library. And right now it's in preview. And if you want to want to enjoy it, all you got to do, it, it, of course, this is granted that you live in those two markets. You just install the Xbox Game Pass Insider Preview uh, uh, app from the Microsoft Store. And you'll be able to dig through it and get started with sharing your membership. Yeah, uh, do we know what the price is for this yet, or do they have any uh, speculation? I'm assuming the it's the, the standard uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate price. It's just that it's uh, you're, be you're being able to share one subscription with four different people. Okay, because uh, I was, I think I was listening earlier to the Windows Central podcast that Jez was on, uh, talking about the potentiality of it being about 20, 25 bucks or so. Uh, so it works out to like, you know, uh, was at five, six bucks a person or something like that. Um, and the other thing is that the restrictions are going to be country based. So you can't be like, hey, you know, I have family in France who loves to play Forza. So, and hey, I live here in the US. So I'll share with them. They'd have to be in the US with you. Now, again, I don't know if it's going to be regional as well. So, uh, you know, maybe I'll be able to share my Game Pass with you in New York uh, or something. You know, we can both pay in on that or something like that. But it is a great opportunity to uh, showcase. Uh, the ability to essentially live stream or live stream games, uh, Xbox, X Cloud, things like that. Uh, and it's going to be, you know, price sensitive for families in general who don't necessarily want to continue buying $70 games, uh, especially, you know, for everyone who's, who's fearing a recession. It's, you know, pay 14 bucks a month versus 70 bucks potentially every other month or whatnot uh, to play these new games or whatever. And you get more from it. More people get to use it, uh, sort of like how they did with uh, uh, profiles for like HBO Max or Netflix or whatnot. So Microsoft is leading the way in this. We know that Sony has their own version that they 
recently launched. So we'll see how quickly they catch up to this and how robust their library becomes. But if this is, you know, the new way of streaming and the new way gaming is going, I'm all for it. And the uh, second topic in the fast recap relates to Windows 11 smart app control feature, which you might not even have right now because smart app control is something that you're only going to get if you reset your PC or clean install Windows 11 version 22H2, which is now in testing in the Windows Insider program. But the feature is getting smarter because now if you download, like, say, a ISO file or a v or VHD file or uh, there's a whole bunch, C, C command file, CHM, CPL, JS, GSC, MSC, a whole bunch of different system file types, basically. If you download these files and Microsoft sees it as suspicious, Smart App Control will stop the file from running and wreaking havoc on your PC. Yeah, you and I were also discussing, what if you're just like a scumbag who goes to these shady websites all the time? Will Smart App just give up and say, you know what, it's, no, uh, it's not worth stopping you from downloading because you either apparently know what you're doing or you just don't care no there's a fee there's a way that it works it's called an evaluation mode where it's basically just scanning your pc to see if you're quote unquote a good candidate for the feature so i guess if you're always downloading like <laughs> crap files microsoft says no he's not a good candidate let's just <laughs> let's just uh let let him mess up his pc and leave him alone we'll leave him to his own devices good luck uh, yeah, uh, with that being said, we'll move on to the next thing, which is ClipChamp deciding to clean up its paid plans. Uh, now there's just a single essential plan, apparently, for the service, where I think they, before they had three different versions, which was like a free, a 720p, and a 1080 or something like that was the highest. Yeah, well, I think it was Creator, Business, and Business Platinum. Right, there right, were right. three plans before, and now it's all been merged together. Either you, you get the free tier which is basically just uh, 1080p exports uh, with the free stock footage and free filters, or you pay the essentials plan, which is now $12 a month, and you get the watermark free exports up to 1080p exports, premium stock footage, premium fil filters and effects, and also uh, branded, branded recordings and the ability to back up your content to the cloud. That's pretty awesome. I mean... Again, for someone or for something that we were assuming was going to compete with iMovie, it's a little more expensive. But uh, as long as they use this money to keep, you know, building in new feature sets, uh, this could put a target on Filmora's back potentially, maybe less of iMovie and more of Filmora's uh, kind of range. And next up is the Windows subsystem for Android on Windows 11 getting the August update. Now, you were like, oh, I haven't used the Windows subsystem for Android <laughs> in months. So what is new anyway? So let's answer that question right here. And what is new <laughs> is a bunch of stuff relating to gaming, basically. So you're going to get experiences, better experiences in several apps, including compatibility for games with joysticks, game pads in games, aiming with the arrow key in games, sliding the arrow key in games, and scrolling and network improvements, on top of the usual security updates and reliability fixes. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Who's out there using the Windows subsystem for Android? Uh, nobody, I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I mean, I, mean I, I suppose there are some developers out there potentially using it, but, I mean, it, it seemed like a big... A, a, big deal at the time where oh we're gonna get android apps and they're like well you're getting amazon versus android apps people are like okay i can deal with that well you're just getting some games really and people are like i can deal with that and they're like well none of the the top tier ones either and i think after that we were just like you know what forget about it until it's ready so it seems like they're still working on it so that's good and the last thing I'll let you grab because Uber receipts are apparently crashing Outlook on Windows. It's like, is it Uber's grand plan to get people to switch to Macs? I hope not <laughs> because it feels like that'd be a dystopian world for everybody. Uh, no, you and I were just discussing that it seems to be some kind of platform issue between the way that the, uh, the receipts at whatever platform Uber is using to present it is not being read correctly by Excel or, or Word, essentially. Uh, and that's uh, that's what's causing the crash. So it looks like both teams, uh, because again, we know that unfortunately Microsoft still works in silo, so to speak, have to come together to figure out how to. So the words team and the Excel team have to come together 
figure out what the crash is and how to fix that before they can put out a fix in general. Uh, and again, we don't even know if this is potentially uh, a Microsoft only thing. This could be just the way that they're interpreting whatever platform Uber is using to display the uh, receipts for people. And, and I don't know. I think are the, you go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know if it, the, the receipts aren't interactive, are they? I don't know what elements. I mean, it seems like they should just be posting a PDF of some sort. I think they're using like different table types or something in their receipts that's bugging out Outlook itself. And Microsoft has to work on a fix that they hope they can get out uh, by patch Tuesday, which is basically one week away at this point. So if you're if you are traveling and you're using an Uber, you might be able to get a free ride, just dispute it and be like, hey, I think Excel, I couldn't read my receipts in time, so could I like get a free ride? You know, yeah. I couldn't pay it. Uh, this charge is different than what I thought. You can get away with a whole bunch of excuses. Anyway, that's the end of our rant uh, for the Fast Recap. And I think we finished it under 10 minutes as usual. Yeah, even if we have enough rants. So let's move on to what we got in the week ahead. Which is my Pixel Bud Pro review. I wore it on a trip to Boston and I have some impressions coming up. I have the case right here. Uh, have one of the buds right here because it fell out of my ear while we were because I'm sweating. <laughs> it fell out of my ear. But yeah, uh, so far, I, re I really like how they work on Windows as well as even on an iPhone and an Android device. They're very awesome earbuds, kind of close to the Surface earbuds, if you ask me. Wow. Uh, I never got a chance to play around with the Surface earbuds. Maybe this year, uh, the, the update event, we'll be able to ch have a chance to review those as well. Uh, looks like we also have some uh, ideas on what are the best back to school monitors for people. Yeah, we have a ton of monitor reviews at on Microsoft. So if you're a student who is working, uh, not working, but schooling from home, we have a bunch of suggestions for monitors that we want to showcase next week. Or if you are a student who's at a dorm and you want to show up your roommate, this is also good good for you. Or if you just work from home and you're tired of an old monitor that maybe work gave you and you're just we're looking to upgrade, or maybe you have an old monitor that you're tired that you bought, this is also be for you as well. Uh, with that being said, I just recently reviewed some st uh, standing desk. Uh, you guys go check that out if you're looking to uh, upgrade your office in general, more than just the monitor. If you want a whole aesthetic uh, change, you can uh, try try out the FlexiSpot E7, I believe, standing desk, which I did, and it's pretty amazing. I recommend standing desk for people just as a change of pace, because sitting down for eight hours is probably not best for your posture, especially if you're going to go from your desk to your couch after work <laughs> and relax. So give yourself a moment to stand up and kind of walk around, get your blood going and things of that nature. Uh, the other thing I review or I will be reviewing now is a ton of laptops. I have the, oh God, I have to go through my list. I have uh, the X1 10th generation uh, X1 Carbon. I have, uh, what was the ThinkPad? ThinkPad X13S, I believe it is, which is the Windows on ARM one, which has been giving me amazing battery life. Uh, it's not a super powerhouse for production for if you're doing like video and stuff like that. But if you are a data processor, which is part of my day job, you know, you're flying through Excel docs, you're flying through macros, you're going through uh, PowerPoints and things of that nature, uh, maybe doing some light image editing. It's been awesome. I, I think I've actually gone two days. And that's what makes you use. So you're not, not heavy uh, without having to charge it and back to back. Like I've been able to do about four days or whatnot and charge it twice. Uh, and then I have a bunch of other things. I think I have a ThinkBook uh, review as well. I have, like I said, I mentioned at the top, Toshiba is back and they're looking to take on ThinkPads and Dell, I believe, they're for precision lines. So they have the DynaBook, which I'll be testing as well, which is kind of a fingerprint magnet, but also a very good device. Uh, and I think that, oh, and then I have my long-term review of the Surface Laptop Go, which I think will probably be one of the best back-to-school devices I could recommend uh, this year. Yeah, and that's it. I think we hit the end of our show, so leaving you for the traditional outro. Yeah, you can find me at uh, MindHit1. Where can people find you? Evac Journal. Yeah, and for those of you who want to uh, keep up on all of this news that we just told you and all the stuff about the week ahead, uh, you can uh, get the news at onmicrosoft.com. If you just want kind of the headlines to kind of go run to tell your friends about, 
you can follow us on Microsoft, uh, which is our Twitter handle. Uh, we do have an Instagram page. I'm falling behind and giving updates on, but I will get back on pace with that. Uh, we also have our Pinterest page, which is dedicated just for gaming. So if you want to follow our writer Brad over there about all the upcoming things about Xbox, Xbox Game Pass, Ultimate, new games to play for the week. I do believe Far Cry 6 is now available. If you guys want to rush out and go play that for free for a little bit. And they have a sale, which is like 68% off, 63% off or something like $23 for the latest far cry which I, I enjoy that line so run out and play that or buy that if you want to uh i think those are all the places you can find us we have not done tiktok because we don't understand it <laughs> and that's it everyone hope to see you again soon same place same time yeah stay safe uh, try to stay cool get out of the heat if you can all right bye-bye peace